Hello again. The problem set here is to find the key move in a checkmate in two moves. So, how should white continue? Evidently, moving his king wouldn't work. And one queen takes c5, which is this. Threatening queen c8 mate doesn't work either because it fails against, can you see it? That's right, a6. And then of course, queen c8, a6 provides black with a flat square on a7. So, what is the key move here? Let's take a good look at it. Put it back at the start. That's it. Without these pawns here, of course, it will be checkmate on either d5 or e5, but they are there. So, what is the key move? Well, the key move is a waiting move, and congrats to those who found it. It's rook to b4. Now this opens up possibilities on a6. I shan't say any more than that at the moment. Just keep a6 in mind for some future point. Now, in a moment, we'll check all variations. But first, let me say that after the present position, after rook b4, Black is in Tutzvong, to be sure. He is compelled to move at this point, and will lose in one more move. But what if he were to forego moving? Would he be safe? Right, let's look at stage one, which is the mate next move. So the possible variations here, let's do them from left to right. After rook before, if black were to play here, or here, then white would play here, either taking the pawn if he'd moved to a6 or just moving into a6 anyhow. And that would unquestionably be checkmate. If he takes the rook with cb, then it's queen c8. And that is back there, of course. So that would be checkmate as well. So neither of those works. So we've tried a6 and a5 that fell to queen a6. We've tried cb which fails to queen c8. What about if he moves this pawn? Well you just nip in here. This is what I was saying earlier on. Now it is available because the pawn doesn't cover that square. The rook covers the b line, that's checkmate. And finally, his only remaining legal move is to move this pawn on. Well, he can't go to d5 because of this pawn on e6, but he can now move to e4 because the pawn is no longer guarding it from f5. And that is equally checkmate. So there's, there's no problem there. Where black is compelled to move, it is unquestionably a loss of the next move after rook b4. The question is, what about foregoing moving? Is black safe? Well, let's say black were to ask white here, I don't want to move, would you let me off? And white would say, yes, it's my turn to move then. Can white deliver checkmate in two moves? Indeed, can he, can he win the game? This is the point. Is black safe or is he still lost? If he's safe, then it's a tutsvon. If he's lost, it's not a tutsvon. And I maintain that this is not a Tutsvong. What is White's winning move here, key move? And then checkmate on the second move. Remember, we're not regarding this as the first move anymore. We're regarding 
Black not being compelled to move, he's foregoing his right to move and he's letting White kickstart the process again. So what is White's key move here? Again, congratulations to those who found it. And this is what I said earlier, A6 is a key square. Now, what we're doing here is we're threatening mate on B7 or C8. Now, mate on B7 can be prevented. If he moves these pawns, it's queen b7 or queen c8 mate. If he pushes this pawn on, it's queen b7 or queen c8. If he takes the rook, it's queen c8 mate. And so therefore, this is not a tutsvang. It's a nice try, but it's, it's, it does not meet the full requirements of that word. So, a little short of the required standard, but I hope you like this additional pseudo Tutzvong tutorial, and goodbye for now.